So we talked about what happens when you drink a glass of water, and so it's only fair that now we talk about what happens when you eat a bunch of salt. So we'll start with our same toy model, and we'll draw our little solutes in. And now let's eat a big salt meal. So the first question again is where does that salt go? And it turns out that just like drinking a glass of water, the salt is going to go straight into the extracellular space. So initially we still have our cell here at the same size and the same number of solutes inside the cell, but now we've added a whole bunch of solutes outside the cell. And so now the concentration of solutes outside the cell is higher than inside. And so we're going to have an opposite fluid shift compared to the one we had last time. Now fluid is going to flow out because of the osmotic pressure. And so now the cell is actually going to lose some volume. It's actually going to shrink down and shrivel up a little bit. And it'll reach equilibrium when the concentration of solutes outside and inside is once again equal. And so what was the result of this? Well, we didn't add any fluid. We only added salt, and then fluid moved from inside cells to outside. So therefore, we're going to have an increase in extracellular volume and a decrease in intracellular volume. And the concentration in both of these areas is going to have gone up because we just added solutes. So an increase in extracellular concentration and an increase in intracellular concentration. And there's actually another situation that's kind of similar in terms of what happens. And that is that instead of adding salt, you can take away water. So one way you might imagine that could happen is maybe if you go to the desert where there's a lot of cacti and you're sweating a lot, you're breathing out a lot of your moisture, the dry air is just sucking a lot of the water out of your body. And it originally comes out of this extracellular part here so that we go to a situation where we have less water and let's say originally, initially, the cell is the same size as before and so as a result we see that the concentration of solutes outside the cell has gone up quite a bit. So because of that, osmotic pressure is going to pull water out of the cell and we will go to an equilibrium that looks more like this. Now our cell is more shriveled up and we've got our solutes floating around such that the concentration inside and outside is the same. So if we compare this situation to this one, we see that we have actually lost extracellular volume, lost intracellular volume, but we've gained extracellular concentration and gained intracellular concentration. So I'm saying these are similar because in both cases you have a shift of water out of the cells, but the difference is that here initially you lost a bunch of volume through water, which is why the volume of both went down.